Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories. So subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, boss enforces lunch rules. The first story, boss enforces lunch rules. Workers take extravagant lunch breaks. On call waiting, turbine breakdowns pile up. Boss's rules change. The second story, Denied promotion led to job search. Found higher paying role, doubled bonuses. Career thrived. The third story, traffic caused lateness. Boss's email on hours angered staff. Malicious compliance ensued, leading to job changes and company loss. The first story is, okay boss, let's have it your way. Okay, so this is two stories in one because they both are based in the same company and both include some malicious compliance. I used to work for a wind turbine manufacturer in service for some years. A bit of background info. Basically, our job was wind turbine maintenance and occasional troubleshooting. Whatever the reason was to go to the turbine site, most of the times required us to stop the turbine, if it wasn't stopped already due to a fault or something, and go up to do our work. Anyone who's ever worked in those things, going up there is not a walk in the park. After stopping the turbine, the time to go up with the elevator is about 10 minutes. Those things are slow. Taking off the harness and other stuff also takes some time, as well as putting all the gear back on when leaving. Not to mention that some sites are quite far away. Here's the first story. Because it was time consuming and complicated to enter and exit the turbine, we usually had our lunch with us, and we ate it up in the turbine. Because we didn't have an actual lunch break, we just took 10 to 15 minutes at some point of the day to eat our food, and then resume working. We got an allowance, which was, can't remember exactly, 10 to 15 euros a day when we had our lunch in the turbine. For some weird reason, our boss started to complain about the extra allowance cost and stated that we're not qualified for it since the conditions of the allowance say that the work site has to be a certain distance away from the actual point of employment. Of course, the distance was not always long enough, depending on the site we were working at, but the rules also continue to state, or it's otherwise not possible to have a lunch break. When we argued that basically it makes no sense to leave the turbine for 30 minute lunch break, he said that yes it's true, but technically we have that possibility so we're no longer getting the allowance. We were frustrated and angry. However, a couple of my colleagues took this quite literally. Because the boss said we have the possibility to go out for a lunch, we do just that. They came to work at 7 a.m., packed their stuff and drove to the site. They were at the turbine about 8 a.m., got up, gear off, unload the tools, etc. At that point it was 9 to 9.30 a.m., they worked for one hour at 10.30. They started packing loose stuff back to bags, geared up and got down. At that point, it was 11. They drove to a restaurant, usually about 20 to 30 minute drive. At that point, it was 11.30. They had their 30 minutes lunch break. After that, they did all the above in reverse order. By the time they got back, it was closer to 1 p.m. They worked for an hour and a half and started packing up and leave because our workday ended at 3.30 p.m. So what used to be about 10 to 15 minutes of quick lunch became 2 to 2.5 hours in the middle of the day. After a while, the boss started asking why basic maintenance is taking so long, usually about 3 days, but now it was more like 5 days. My colleague calmly explained that since we are not getting the allowance anymore, they're taking their lunch break out of turbine since we technically have that possibility, and by doing that takes more than 2 hours out of work time every day. Needless to say, the allowance was brought back quite quickly. Here's the second one. We sometimes had on calls on weekends, mostly Saturdays 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. They were only for breakdowns and other unexpected faults. We usually started our on call at home monitoring with the surveillance system if everything was fine, and if not, we had an hour to leave home. Sometimes just to drive to a distant site to see that some subcontractor had stopped a turbine for work without informing us. Our boss had noticed this as well, and he said that we need to wait for a call from the on call dispatcher before we go anywhere, that it's actually the rules. Maybe this way we will eliminate the unnecessary trips. Everyone knew that most of the on-call dispatchers were very lazy. Of all the years I'd already worked in that company, I remember one time getting a call from a dispatcher, a new guy. Half the time they were even positioned in a different country with a different time zone. We told our boss this and he said, well, it's their job. You have to wait for a call. Okay, let's do just that then. Just for information, on a windy day, a breakdown costs the customer serious money per hour. Saturday morning I woke up at 7.30 a.m., have some coffee and open the surveillance to see that there's a fault in one of the turbines and it's stopped. I messaged my colleague. He told me not to monitor them and we decide to obediently wait for the dispatcher to give us a green light. 
9 a.m., no call. 10 a.m., still no call. Turbine is still down, wind is catching up. This site was pretty far, about one hour drive away so the dispatcher should definitely react quite quickly. 11.30 a.m., our boss calls. Boss, why is there a turbine stopped and no one's there? Me, we're waiting for a dispatcher to call us as you instructed. Boss mumbles something and says, just go there. Me, but we can't go unless the dispatcher calls us to go. It's the rules, remember? My boss left the call and 10 minutes later the dispatcher calls and sounds annoyed. Apparently my boss called him. Dispatcher, I see you have a turbine down. Why are you not there? Me, our boss told us to wait for your call. He said it's the rules. Dispatcher, well now I called so you can go. I can see there's another breakdown at another site as well. Let's hope for easy fixes. I can hear him swallowing his pride since he knows it's his job to call as soon as breakdowns occur. After we were so late on leaving home and breakdowns accumulated, we got ourselves a very nice overtime bonus after fixing everything. After this, the dispatcher called every weekend at 8 a.m. when there was a breakdown. Also, like by some miracle, subcontractors were very diligent of reporting their stops to on call from that point. My boss might have had a strong word there. Edit. Yes, same boss. I think you might be right. There might be malicious compliance on both, us and the boss. My boss was actually very strict on eliminating unnecessary downtime, which is a good thing. So creating more downtime by following the rules was not something I would have expected of him. Edit 2. The elevator's inside. Not the kind you see in apartment buildings, though. It's a steel and aluminum cage barely for two people, running on steel cable. Doesn't go all the way up, so we had to climb the rest of the way. The next story is... Director told me I had to prove myself for a promotion. So I proved myself to another company for a 25% base pay increase and double the bonus percentage. So eight plus years ago, I used to work as a business analyst for a large multinational construction materials company. I was a good employee. They were a great employer. I had been given two promotions in my time there and been moved to several domains in the IT department. I learned a lot. A role came up to be a senior business analyst within a new domain and for various reasons I was denied the promotion. Not a big deal. I understood the reasons. I really did. I wasn't bitter. A more deserving external candidate 100% got the position. I was still given the opportunity to work in that domain. Great learning opportunity. A few successful projects later in the new domain I asked if I could organically be promoted to a senior business analyst. And by successful delivery I mean my business partner going to another director in IT, who had a stake in that domain. Where's he been all my life? So I had definitely done good, if not great. My manager spoke with my director, and the response was, well, he needs to prove himself. I had to laugh. Don't get me wrong again. My director was a great guy. He, after all, did promote me twice and gave me the opportunity to learn all these various new domains of the business. Nothing against him. The explanation just peeved him off. I would have been satisfied with, there's no budget this year, or I don't think I'll get approval for an in-place promotion. HR was one of the domains I supported, so I know how things go. So I kept learning the new domain and started applying for various jobs outside the company. Took a few months, but one role finally clicked. Current job, 88K plus 15% bonus paid annually. New job, 110K plus 30% bonus paid quarterly. Director wanted me to prove myself. I just proved my worth to another company. Got a 22K raise on my base and doubled my bonus percentage. My manager then comes and asks me, so was there anything we could have done to keep you, like make you a senior? Well, I only started looking because they said no to being promoted. Otherwise, I was and still am happy here. The money's hard to turn down, though. In hindsight, I'm glad they denied me the promotion. I would have never left that company otherwise and not been on my current career trajectory. Edit. Sometimes a small push like this can be all we need to help us with our next move. My manager must have quickly realized that they screwed up. He moved on a few months after me. He was denied his own promotion while I was still there. He also proved his worth to another company. I had become complacent. The push really helped set a much better career path and way more lucrative earning potential for me. Edit 2. I only lasted at the new company for six months. Horrible culture. Moved to another company. Took a pay cut but my take home was basically the same as I had significantly reduced costs and additional company perks that directly impacted my bottom line. Stayed there for five years. Moved to the US. Moved to Canada due to COVID. Moved to another company in Canada. Moved to the US but WFH. I've since more than doubled my pay from the 110K. I've been lucky. The third story is, don't be malicious or I will be too. This happened about five or so years ago. 
when I was a junior developer for a bespoke software development house. I do not remember exactly wording, so things are somewhat paraphrased. I had been working for the company for a little under two years, and this was my first software development job. I was very loyal to the company, as they had taken a chance on me, so to speak. It's quite difficult to get your first development job here, as every company is looking for someone with some experience, even if you do have some qualification. This was a small company with around 15 staff at its largest, including some administrative staff that were shared between this company and another company that the owner and CEO ran from the same premises. I lived about a 30 to 45 minute drive away on a good day and always left for the office really early, at least an hour and a half before starting in case of traffic. We were told we were allowed to work somewhat flexible hours, as long as we worked our time in, but were always encouraged to be in by 8 a.m. Because I often left early from home, I would often be in by 7 o'clock, sometimes earlier. I had keys for the office so I could let myself in. I arrived late one Monday morning, having been stuck in a huge amount of traffic. There were at least four accidents and a few broken down vehicles on the highway, so I arrived about 35 minutes late. I walked in, set up my laptop, and started working. A few minutes later, my direct boss, the development manager, let's call him D Manager, looks at me irritably and asks where I've been. I told him that I had messaged him at around 6.45 to let him know traffic was bad and I may be late. That was the last I heard of it before then. I left work at 17.30, having worked through my lunch as usual in five minutes before I should technically have left, considering what time I arrived. The next morning I arrived to a company-wide email from D Manager that read something like this. All staff, even Grim GX and other dev need to work their hours. You're not allowed to leave early unless you ask for permission. We will be docking salaries for time missed in future. D Manager. This was in spite of the fact that I had worked between 8 and 10 hours of overtime the week prior, and about 40 for the month. Needless to say, I was irritated. Other dev, who was another more senior developer at the company, was just as irritated as I was, and worked nearly as many hours as I did. Overtime for development staff is pretty much always unpaid where I'm from, so we aren't paid for the hours we work extra. I was offended that they would make this a public matter, and would have reacted very differently if they had spoken to me in person and perhaps been given me a chance to explain my perspective. We were also told when hired that this is give and take, and we work hard but we play hard, etc. Anne was under the impression that they appreciated the hard work. I was running three to five projects at a time, which included development, creating spec docs, customer software support, meeting with the client, deployments, etc. This was the reason why I was constantly working overtime. Other dev and I walked out for a cigarette, I know, not great but I still smoke, and discussed what we should do. Our malicious compliance. We decided that from now on we would only work the hours for which we were paid. We arrived not before 7.50, even if we had to wait somewhere before arriving and would start working at 8 sharp. We took every single lunch break to which we were entitled. We left at 17 on the dot, no matter how much work there still was to do. We also both immediately started looking for other work. A few weeks later, other dev came to me and let me know that he had found other work and that they wanted to interview me. He resigned that same day. I ended up being offered and signing a contract at the new company another week or so later, only a day before being called into a meeting with D Manager and the CEO. They wanted to know why I had been to use their term, clock watching, and they wanted to let me know that they were concerned about deadlines. Just to be clear, I had not been slacking at all. There was simply more work than what could be done in normal business hours. The look on their faces when I, in the same meeting, told them that the email that D Manager had sent to the whole company was completely inappropriate and that this is why I had been clock watching and was giving my notice was priceless. They tried to offer me a higher salary, but I felt as though the bridge was already burned at that point. They lost two valuable employees, but I don't care. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.